Experts are sounding the alarm over a new Omicron subvariant BA2.75, which has already been detected in at least 10 countries. To give us some insights, we have Vaccine Expert Panel Chief Dr. Nina Gloriani joining us live via Zoom. Dr. Nina, good afternoon. First off, what do we know so far about this centurious subvariant of COVID-19? Is it more transmissible? Are the symptoms, uh, you know, uh, more worse than the other subvariants? Okay. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, right now, what we're seeing is that it appears to be more transmissible than its. Uh, predecessor like uh, BA.5 no so it's it's getting more people infected than it's uh, other sub the, the other omicron uh, sub variants so um, we have um, this is the what they call the centaurus virus now but it is really not that an official name yet it has more mutations than the BA.5 that we have seen actually circulating so and it is increasingly uh, taking over the other subvariants that are in circulation all right so uh, you mentioned that it is more transmissible compared to the other omicron subvariants we already know that ba.5 is already very transmissible and there has been talk about uh, its ability to evade vaccine immunity so how much of a threat is this subvariant compared to other omicron sublineages and are we capable of closely monitoring the subvariant and would there be a need maybe to improve our genome sequencing capabilities well, actually, what we're doing is uh, probably enough. No, we, we cannot really de do so much. What we have is, uh, at least uh, as far as I know, is around 750 isolates tested per week. I hope that is still being done right now. So what we are doing is contributing to the sequences of the isolates we are uh, uh, experiencing, we are having right now here in the Philippines. And most of these are now the subvariants like in many other parts of the world. So, yes, it is evading the immune uh, responses we've had before, whether vaccine-induced or uh, from natural infection. So, so clearly, we, we need to do something about it. We have to tighten our controls, our minimum public health precautions, and of course, we need some boosters again. Right, but if it does if you, uh, evade vaccine immunity as well as natural immunity, how important is it to still get boosters? A lot of people are saying that, well, you know, if it's going to evade vaccine immunity, why get a booster? Uh, that does the, the, the belief of some people that we, we should not get it because it will evade it anyway. No, it is protecting us, the booster, especially the first, bo the first booster, has data that shows that uh, the additional dose actually provides a broadening of the immune responses, whether neutralizing antibodies or the T cell mediated immune responses, against a, a, uh, the more uh, against more variants. You know, so that that broadening of immune response comes with the maturation of the immunity after a series of doses, and the first dose actually showed that. Now, in the second booster dose data, what they showed is that um, the number of hospitalizations, these are the data that are shown better, no? the number of hospitalization and deaths that are, are reduced because of the second booster are higher than when you get only the first booster. All right, so, so in layman's term, Dr. Yeah. Nina... Yeah, right. So in layman's terms, it uh, you might get infected, but this will still save you from potential hospitalization or even death, yeah? Yes, yes. So maybe it will not save you from the infection, the mild infection. You, you know that we get to see more of the mild infections with these subvariants now. But it will help you, uh, get you protected from the more severe form, the critical form of COVID. All right, so bottom line, boosters are still important and people should still get them. Now, as COVID cases are again on the rise, um, do you see this uptick peaking very soon? I mean, uh, the cases are, of course, uh, not as grave as they were like last year in 2020. Uh, having said that, can hospitals and can the medical community relax a little bit? Can they afford to do that? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think everyone is actually preparing 
and we, we do not want to see a uh, you know a repeat of what we had before that the hospitalization rate the, the use of hospitalization uh, went up and so I, I would leave to the modeling the people the, the the trending of this but I think we're really seeing an uptick a, a little it's not really very much but uh, what we'd like to also say is that at least it's not the serious form of COVID that we're seeing. All right, still nothing to scoff out. A lot of uh, people I know have gotten it and they still are suffering even but, if but they But you don't. know, we yes. should also not uh, be complacent. Mm -hmm. Why? Even if it is a mild infection, that is also going, going to cause transmission. And you do not want the virus being transmitted. You know, but because the more it gets transmitted, the more it will mutate. So we do not want that transmission as well. All right, very good point over there, Dr. Gloriani. Now, uh, the government is, of course, urging to roll out second booster shots, ASAP. This is for the general population because vaccines are already set to expire. Have you guys over at the vaccine expert panel discussed this and what to do? What's the best way to, do, to deal with these almost expiring vaccines? Well, uh, we can only do so much or say so much. In the end, it is the Department of Health, the HDAC, that actually makes the final recommendations. But we are hoping that they will come to a sort of, uh, what's this, a decision that will be good for everyone. All right, another issue, Dr. Glariani, they're currently reviewing the current COVID-19 alert level system. Do you think this is necessary? And if it were, if you were asked, Dr. Glariani, what recommendations would you give? What improvements? Well, actually, I'm part of that uh, panel of <laughs> experts that's actually recommending the, the shift to the parang disaster traffic light sort yes. of uh, warning system which we're used to already because of the disasters, now you're red, green, and yellow. I, I think the people can easily adjust. We know if it's yellow, you, you should be more cautious. Not that you should be complacent, but we know that if, in you, if you're in the red, you, you, you know what to do. You, you should be more and more careful and protect yourself better. No? Yung green major, we have to relax. Why? Because we also want the economy to, to recover. You have to balance all of these things. So I think that will be good. It's easy to follow. Red, yellow, and green. I mean, as a part of the masses, siguro. Yeah, it's, just, it's a little bit uh, more organic and easier to understand, like traffic lights. And I think even the weather systems are alert. The alert systems are also fashioned that way. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Vaccine expert panel chief, Dr. Nina Gloriani. Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Take care.